How does one face certain death? One man survived a horrific car crash that cost him half his skull, but not his life. Join us here each week for amazing survival tales of superhuman strength. Find out why these people refuse to succumb, but instead show us how they survive. The new guy, Paul Templer, is about to become one of the luckiest men alive. Unbeknownst to Paul, he is about to survive a four-pronged attack by a male bull hippo on the Zambezi River. In Africa, the hippopotamus is known for killing more humans each year than any other animal on the continent. For Paul to stand a chance of surviving his brush with death, he must first overcome one of the largest mammals on Earth with a two by four foot jaw width and an average weight of two of these Jeep SUVs. Paul must match his skill and 180 pound frame against an animal that he could neither outrun on land nor outswim in the Zambezi. We begin Paul's brush with death on the morning he was assigned to lead a canoe tour down the Zambezi toward the historic Victorian Fall. It would be there out of an abundance of caution that Paul would decide to take a wider berth around a pool of hippos. Everything seemed to be going well with his decision until he noticed that one of these less experienced canoers was having trouble navigating faster currents. Being the experienced guide, Paul went back to assist in freeing the canoe before watching in horror as this man's canoe was shot out in the air from beneath with such a force by an apparent hippo attack. Paul raced to get the inexperienced canoeer and now potential drowning victim out of the water. As Paul reached down to grab this young man's hand to pull him to safety, he noticed the water bubbling from beneath, then a burst from beneath that drug him down under. Confused as to what happened, Paul felt as if he were wet from the waist down, but not from the waist up. It was then that he realized that he must have been swallowed half by either an alligator or a hippo. Paul recanted the incident like this. He states, I managed to move my fingers around and was able to feel the bristles on the hippo's snout. At this point, Paul realized that he was stuck in the beast's throat with no imminent means of escape. He said it was slimy, slippery, and wet. It smelled like rotten eggs. I'm so far down his throat, and I'm not a small guy, he said. He felt it was so far down the mouth of the hippo that it caused the animal's gag reflex to which he spat him out and Paul burst to the surface. When the hippo eventually spat Paul out, he quickly swallowed him again, but this time feet first. Paul says he was thrashed around the water trying not to drown before the hippo spat him out for a second time. But as Paul swam towards his friends, he saw the monster hippo charging towards him with his jaws wide open before it dragged him to the bottom of the river. Paul's military training kicked in and he remembered that he had a gun on his hip. But before he could react, the animal charged him again, leaving Paul little time to do anything but to put his hand out to stop the animal. Face to face with the bull hippo underwater, the animal grabbed Paul's arm and kept on gnawing until he bit it off at the shoulder. Paul says at this point, that I can see green and blue with the sunlight on the water surface. And when I look around, I can see my blood mingling with the water. Paul was eventually rescued by one of his friends, who he said showed incredible bravery to paddle over and grab him. Tragically, his friend who was knocked from his canoe by the beast drowned. It took Paul eight agonizing hours to get to the hospital without any painkillers. Wounded but still alive, he made it to Victoria Falls Hospital where he had the remaining portion of his arm amputated by doctors. Since the attack, Paul has led a crusade to motivate people how to get over the issues they face in life as he got over the hippo's attack. Additionally, Paul has also survived cancer, continues to paddle a canoe with one arm, and is a proud father to three children.